Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look, courtesy of my friends over at McFarland Toys. We are totally checking out their brand new DC Multiverse Wave, the Batman Last Night on Earth, based off the Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo comic book of the same name. A bit of an Elseworlds type tale, but four figures to collect to build old Bane here. Collect to build giant massive Bane based on his appearance in this particular comic book story. So that's why he looks a certain way as opposed to like the 90s Bane, which... Yeah, I mean, that's that's really it. I'll include all the barcodes here if you want to screen grab any of them. They are starting to hit stores a little bit early. They are really slated to start hitting March 1st, but you can kind of sort of pick them up at Target. You should not have a problem buying them. There really shouldn't be any street dates enacted. So if you can find them, yeah, totally. Well, based on this video, I'm sure you can make up your mind if you want them or not. This is very cool how you can put old Scarecrow. We'll talk about that in just a second, but Scarecrow is definitely interesting. And then of course, finally you got Wonder Woman. Again, her appearance based off of this particular comic book. This sort of has in a way, like a Kenner sort of Legends of the Dark Knight, Batman Elseworlds type vibe to it. And just as a heads up, I will be going into heavy spoiler territory for The Last Night on Earth comic book as it pertains to all of these action figures. I've had plenty of time to read it, and I still suggest going back and reading it now. It's a great, really cool story. I mean, it's bizarre as all holy heck, but it's pretty dang cool, and I'm really stoked that they made some action figures for it. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Bane Build to Collect action figure wave. We will begin much as the story does of Bruce Wayne in a Wayne Arkham straight jacket and restraint helmet that he concocted to make up his bat suit. It's kind of a is Batman kind of crazy sort of deal. He wakes up in Arkham Asylum at the beginning of this story and comes to find out that many people that he's interacted with, let's say Joker, Harley Quinn, Bane, are all either inmates or doctors that work at Arkham Asylum. And this whole time, the big bat suit that he's worn has really been a straitjacket. So that's really interesting to kind of see. One of his accessories is, of course, as you're probably going, if you haven't read it, what the heck is Joker's head in a lantern? And as the story continues, Batman, quote unquote, wakes up in a desert and finds Joker's decapitated but living head in a lantern in the middle of the desert. They start having a conversation and they begin their journey. And the lantern is actually really well done. Joker's head looks great. I like how one side is painted orange to kind of reflect the desert sand. He does come with a baton, which he doesn't really have that, let's say, in the artwork. He does use it to kind of escape Arkham from the guard. So it's probably more along going for that sort of deal. It's rendered nicely and there's a little loop on the belt that you can put it on, so that's great. The back straps are meant to emulate the tattered cape of Batman. I like that. I like, you know, every little thing on here is supposed to be a really warped, twisted version of the bat suit. Like the W for Wayne is actually kind of reminiscent of a bat on there. But Joker is killer. You can hold him. I mean, he looks like he stepped right out of the artwork. And that's what McFarlane really does well with these DC Multiverse figures, even down to the straps, the details on the belt, the sides, the gauntlets, everything has detail to it that is unmatched as of right now for the price point. Joker's head comes in this lantern. It's really well done. It's a great looking Joker head. It's painted nicely. Again, I love the orange on the back side. So what would have been really cool would have been to have the pole that he hangs from when Bruce Wayne discovers him, I think that that's kind of missing. That would have been a little added bonus. If you can remove Joker from this, go for it. But as far as what I can see, you'd have to really crack this thing open. And I have no plans on doing so. Like I said, the baton that he comes with, nicely detailed, rendered, 
flat black, not much to it, but it does get the job done. And I really like that he does have a bit of a weapon storage right there on his belt loop. And you can fit that in there. It's not necessary, but they went the extra mile. So I like that. The restraint helmet that was remade into the Batman cowl has all kinds of detail and sculpt to it. So it looks great. You get some nice range of motion despite having some minimal area around the neck. He's got nice ball jointed arms. He's got bicep swivel, double jointed elbows as well. And those ball joints for the wrists that give him mobility, they're not as prevalent as some of the other DC Multiverse figures are, so I don't mind them. He does have a bit of an ab crunch, more so back than forward. It's more of a rubberized material. He can kind of sort of kick to the side and kick out. You can get some movement out of him, but the lower part of the straight jacket will sort of impede it. He does not have thigh swivel. He's got double jointed knees and he's got good rotation in the foot. Also some toe articulation as well. So overall, it's a well articulated Batman in a really cool straight jacket. Next up, of course, is the Wonder Woman figure from this storyline and kind of, you know, reading the comic book and kind of expecting some more from this figure, to be quite honest with you. This figure is missing the, you know, on her face in the comic book, she's heavily scarred on the side of her face, kind of goes over her mouth and towards her neck. The short hair, shaven head, just a mohawk ponytail sort of deal does not translate well to this at all. It looks like she's got dirt or she's been burned and it's very much angled. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good. It's not aesthetically pleasing. You look at the artwork, shaved head, skin tone, and this is like a really dark, dark wash and no scarage on this side of her face. So that to me is a bummer. It's a missed opportunity because I kind of expect McFarlane to really bring out those little minute details. They put the black lantern ring on the Batman. There is wonkiness in the joints as well. You go from flesh to gold to a red boot with a flesh colored pin. The cape is really well done. It looks kind of like a spawn cape, to be honest with you. Really nicely detailed, looks like material. Her only accessory is the sword that she comes with. She does have a bit of a more of a trigger holding hand than a sword holding hand. It's not really even stylized. You could tell it'd be for a gun if you really wanted to, but it's the only open hand that she has and it does hold it nicely. It just, she really would have benefited, I think, from some extra hands, but the sword is well done. It's nicely painted. It's nicely detailed. A very Thermoscarin sword, so I can appreciate that and Wonder Woman does need a sword. As far as articulation goes, you'll get some good rotation out of the head. The ponytail really doesn't upset anything. She's got nice arms. The cape will hinder it from sort of moving up any higher than this. You can move it around, but then it doesn't look as natural. The backside is all painted nicely. She kind of has a classic Wonder Woman mixed with more modern Wonder Woman attire. She can kind of do the splits, kick out. I think this is another thing where some, some thigh cuts would have been good. And as you can see, you go from flesh to gold to red joints it's it's very off-putting and again i would think that that i don't expect that from mcfarland we'll say the boots the shoes are not my favorite at all she's sort of hard to stand without the black stand that she comes with she has toe articulation with the wrong pin she does have like a sword scabbard thing right there it's doesn't have any paint on it so it kind of looks as like kind of like ninja turtle weapons in a way and you can either have the, the sword sheath like this, you can put the red cape around it, you can kind of move it and angle it. It does kind of get hindered when you go to put her arm in, but if you angle it just right, you should be able to slip the sword in. Not a problem at all. This is not my favorite Wonder Woman. It's just okay, but it's not the greatest one that they've done. And ultimately, I really don't recommend her. Next up is Omega, and this guy is... Fantastic. I love the way that this character came out. And like I said, spoilers, if you're not familiar, this in the storyline is the original Bruce Wayne now harnessing the anti-life equation. He's taken over. He's the bad guy. Bruce Wayne, the original Bruce Wayne, is the bad guy. And of course, the guy in the straitjacket is kind of like a clone. That's really the easiest way read the story it's great but this guy's colors pop 
the reds, everything is painted nicely. He looks like he stepped right out of the comic book. And he does come with a pair, sort of a pair of extra hands. He's got an outstretched hand. He's got a weapon holding hand slash gun holding hand. And then two fists, which are great. That that's, that's something I think most Batman figures should come with are punching hands. I will say the, the Kevlar looking gray bodysuit, the sleek black, the reds, a little tiny cape, which I think works really nicely. He's got a bat butt going on. The mask is fantastic. Again, really bringing forth that Capullo artwork. You get a fantastic range of motion out of this guy. He can look all the way up. He can look down, be brooding. He's got butterfly joints. He's got great rotation in the arms. He's got bicep, double jointed elbows. He does have the black pins, you know, amidst the gray. I'm willing to forgive it because that that's something that we've seen before in lots of different figures. But unlike the Wonder Woman one, this one just kind of, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. He's got great rotation in the waist, upper diaphragm. He can crunch. He can go back. He can kick out. He's got double jointed knees. This again, I think would have benefited from some thigh rotation. I think I think that that is something that I that more figures need to have after the whole death metal Batman. I think it needs to be more of a thing because getting some more articulation out of this guy would just be awesome. Next up is the Scarecrow action figure, and what a disgusting, horrifying figure! And leave it to McFarlane to bring it to you. This looks, again, like he stepped out from the comic book. And you really don't even know what you're looking at. I mean, he's got big robotic hands with syringes. He's half a torso. He's got like this big red bag over his head with a breathing apparatus. I believe it's stated that Omega had something to do with this. Like he created, like he's keeping Scarecrow alive. You can see the skeletal remains, the guts, the base of his tailbone, his spine. I mean, he's got a noose around his neck. Kind of like gives a Batman the Animated, new Batman the Animated Series vibes. But he does come with a flight stand to keep him aloft. Now, I know most of you will be going the other direction, which we'll look at in just a second. But look at this thing. I mean, there is a full-fledged zombie face, Scarecrow, Jonathan Crane, underneath that mask. And I love that you can kind of see it, but it is there. The noose is great. You can move that around. You can pull it off if you'd like. This is articulated right here. Is basically what's left of him, his lower body. His wrists will spin. His arms will... Everything is well articulated and pretty much everything that you would want from this type of figure, his wrists, his elbows. These, I do wish he had more articulation in the hands just to kind of give him more of that spider. It's very much set, although you can move these two. They're mostly like they're kind of put together. The first two and the last two fingers are separate joints, but they move in unison with one another. He's got this big breathing oxygen tube thing right here, but the best part is is you can take it off. Now, you don't really get to see him in the comic book without this. So this is kind of like a little extra thing. And again, McFarlane and his monsters. Here you go. A big old zombified face, teeth, goo, everything that's left of Jonathan Crane. And again, you don't know in the story what really happened to him. You just know that he has some sort of weird symbiotic relationship now with Bane. And that is really where this figure shines, especially with this little tab right here, which I'll show you how that works in just a second. Now, the big build to collect figure is Bane. And this guy is every bit as much as they promised, a huge hulking Bane. You can even see the Batman mask right there, a little symbol on him. He is well detailed. He's huge. He's got the green Bane tubes. He's all busted up. He does not have much to him. He is the artwork brought to life. He even has a little peg hole on his back. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But a lot of people were saying, and it did take me a while, and I'll show you, you can actually connect the legs really nicely, and they will secure in there no matter what. So what you do is basically just take a thing of hot water, boil it in the microwave for four minutes, pull it out, put the legs in the hot water, just to where you tab it in for about 30 seconds, pull them out, and just 
clip them right on and they will go and they're on. They're not going anywhere. This Bane does not have a problem with not securing his legs. You won't really be able to do it without this method, as I will say. The one problem, though, I will tell you is that his hands do not stay on well at all. Even with the boiling hot water trick, it doesn't work. The head is secure on there. You won't get much rotation out of it as far as looking up. He does have a zipper on the back. That's kind of cool. I like that they put that little detail in there. You get some nice rotation out of the arms. When you do connect the arms, you can heat those up as well. I had no problem attaching mine and they are solid, but you do get some nice motion out of him. This guy is basically a brick and if you want a huge amount of articulation out of this guy, this will probably not be the bane for you. But if you want something menacing and hulking and straight from Pulo's artwork, this will work for you. I mean, he's got basic articulation. He has, I mean, barely an ab crunch. He mostly just spins, but that's like a soft rubber material where his gut is. But the legs will stay on and they will rotate. My knees are incredibly stuck. I did heat them up, they worked, and then they kind of went back to being stuck. So play around with it, just go slow. I didn't feel like it was ever gonna break, but just be careful with it. He does have toe articulation, not much of a rocker. I believe it's there, but it doesn't rock that much. But you can get him into the walking position with the scarecrow on his back. The legs work. It's not one of those things where, oh my God, I can't, like, dramatics. It does work. Just heat it up and pop them on. And so when everything's attached, grab that hole again on Bane's back. Grab your scarecrow, treat him to a nice dinner, and then bingo, bango, you got yourself one symbiotic weird relationship that's never fully explained in the last Night on Earth comic book. Scarecrow just rides around on Bane, and my theory is that Bane really isn't too alive anymore. Again, watch the hands. That's one of the big bummers from this figure, is that his hands fall off. So, not too thrilled about that, but keep it in mind, right? Scarecrow, he's solid on there too. He's not going anywhere. Stand him up. Get him all nice and sturdy. This is a great looking figure. And once you got the Bane together, you can see, I mean, right out of the comic book. Some nitpickage here is that I personally feel like Scarecrow sits way too low on Bane. I think if it would have been beneficial to maybe be able to move him up a little bit higher or even if the peg hole was a little bit higher and the fact that Bane has some issues with you got to really heat up the legs to attach him but the hands continue to fall off. Not a good thing. And going forward in the DC Multiverse line, I hope that we never do see this type of thing again. Some height discrepancies again in this wave. This particular Batman, the death metal Dark Knight Batman, is basically the same Batman as the straight jacket Batman, and one's taller than the other, although this really does look great with the Joker lantern, as he does look throughout much of... Last night on Earth, he's smaller than Bane. Bane towers over him, so that's the proper height I like to see. So well done there. As far as Omega goes, again, should be the same height. If not, Omega should be a lot beefier, I think bulkier. Not huge hulking, but bigger, at least as big as this Batman. Wonder Woman and this Batman, yeah, they fit kind of, I mean, I think Wonder Woman should just always be a little bit taller. She's an Amazon, so that's kind of lacking in the height there. There are some discrepancies with this wave. The main one building the Bane. That's the main one. We've already talked about it, so we don't need to beat a dead horse. The joint system on Wonder Woman, the fact that she's missing certain elements that really bring her character to plastic form, I think, is missing. The scarring, the hair, it it's not my favorite. And therefore, I don't really recommend the Wonder Woman for Omega. He's just really well done. He looks great. I think the missed opportunity there would to be give him an extra head, the unmasked old man, beat beat the holy heck Bruce Wayne head. I think that that would have been awesome to be able to put on. As far as the Bruce Wayne in the straight jacket, there's some misaligned pegs as well. Joker's head in a lantern is great. The stick to hold him would have been nice, 
but overall he's a nice looking figure. This is not going to be a wave for everyone. This is going to be for those who have read the comic and really read it. And for that part, yeah, you're going to kind of pick and choose. Some people will not like the lack of articulation, or I would say not lack, but just not as much articulation for the Bane figure as every other figure, but that's okay. They don't need to have that. And at least for me, what kind of positions do you want Bane to be in? He just lumbers around the entire storyline. Maybe he throws a couple punches or doesn't, but that, for the most part, is his character. He's just kind of Scarecrow's transportation. So, in that sense, he works, but again, the joint system doesn't. That's inexcusable. But I'm curious to know what you guys think about this wave. Is it for you? Are you going to grab some, all, any... None. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And again, thank you to McFarlane Toys for setting these all out to give you guys this fresh look. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, please read The Last Night on Earth before you make any snap decisions about whether you like these figures or not. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>